Okay, we're going to take a look at templates. Now we're going to want to take a HTML file and we're going to want to parse that so that way we can serve it back to our client. Now one thing to be aware of is we want to make sure that we're using the template package inside the HTML package. There's also a template package in the text package, but we don't want to use that one. That one's not going to be as safe. The HTML package actually has escape functions. They're going to escape malicious code someone may be trying to inject in your, into our website. So if we look at that, we have our HTML, our HTML package, and it has a escape string and an, and an unescape string. So the unescape, the escape string is going to take a symbol like this, something like say if someone's going to inject some, some JavaScript into our site, the less than symbol, and it will change it to this HTML symbol. Difference being both of them may look like this on the website, but this one will not execute, will not execute any code. So as you can see here, we have some text here. It, <clears throat> it runs um, HTML, HTML .escape string runs on our variable s. And as you can see, this less than symbol gets changed to this safe HTML symbol. And if you look at, if you really wanted to reverse the process, you could do that with the unescape string. You could take, you know, your HTML symbol and you could change it back to a standard, you know, less than symbol. But just remember that the danger of doing this, if it's not from a trusted source, um, this could really put your website at risk. Now, to parse our file, we're going to use template.parseFiles. And this is going to take our file name, and this is going to return a pointer to a template. So we went ahead and created our template here, and it's going to go ahead and return it here, or save it into our pointer to our template. When we're just, go, we're not returning, we're not using the error, so we're just throwing it away. But anyway, looking at our, our template, a template is simply just a struct. So let's take a little bit of a further back look at it, but it's going to have several different methods. So we have our template type and we have all these different methods that we can use on that. So we return our template and of course we do our standard. We we fire up our server, you know, we register, you know, our path to our handler. And when we run our handler, we're going to use our template. We're going to use one of those methods, which is the execute one. And it's going to go ahead and take a writer and it's going to go ahead and serve that parse template to that writer. Now, the second parameter here is nil. And this is if we wanted to pass any pass in any data. Now, if you say you wanted to pass in a name into your template, say, hello, John, for instance, you could put John here and you could pass it in your template. Uh, we're going to go over that in another video when we go over control, control, control structures and templates. But for now, we're just going to leave that nil. So if we run this, What we should see is what well, this parsed but served back to us. Okay, there we go. Hello from index one HTML. Now if we now if we wanted to, we don't actually have to keep this in the same file. So what's going on here? It's looking for an index1.html. And as you can see here, our main.go file is right here. So this is going to determine where it's going to start looking. It's going to look inside the directory that main.go is contained in. So we said, hey, look inside the temp2 folder. 
it finds our index1.html and it serves it to us. But let's say we don't want to we don't want to parse a file in our immediate directory in the same one as say may not go. Well, we could do that. And let's say if we want let's let's just go ahead and look, take a look at index.2. Now to do that though, we have to direct it to where this file is. So like we said, it's gonna look where main.go is, and it says, hey, it's in this directory, and from this point, we need to tell it where to look. So it needs to look inside the data1 folder, and then we just give it the name of our file, and it finds index.2. There we go index.2.html and if you want to take a look at it you can see that's where our text is coming from and of course you know if we wanted to go down another level let's say if we wanted index you know index 3 so it would look hey it's in the we're at the temp 2 folder so look inside the data 1 look inside data 2 and then it's going to be index 3.html. So we just have to provide it that path so it knows how to get there. There we go. Now let's say we don't want to just keep going down into the directory, you know, further down into directory, down into directory. Let's say we wanted to we wanted to parse index4.html. This is actually one directory above. This is inside the, the temp path folder. So to do that, we're just gonna use our dot dot forward slash. And what, the, and what this is just telling it to do is from this directory, go ahead and go up into the directory above it and look inside of there for our index.html. There we go, index4.html. Now, another way we could do this is we could actually use the method instead of the function. So here we're using the function inside of our template uh, package, but just as easily of all of those different methods, we could just use this method on the uh, template uh, struct and it will do just the same thing. There we go. Now here we're we're just we're just parsing one file. That's not going to be terribly useful to us. So more than anything, you know, more than likely, you're going to be using several different files. So let's just go ahead and go to our other example. Okay, and for this, we're going to use, get rid of some of those. And for this, we're gonna go ahead and use the template.parse glob. And the nice thing about this one is it's gonna go ahead and parse several files at once for us. So we can still give it a path. Just notice that our main.go is in the you know, temp parse folder, and our templates here are actually inside a templates folder. So we say, hey, go to the templates folder, and we can actually give it a pattern, and it will only parse things that match that pattern. So we have our wildcard character, which means that we can have anything in front as long as it ends with .html. So it doesn't matter if it says about first, it ends in .html, same thing here, ends in .html. 
So, but if let's say we had a different folder in here that wasn't a .html folder, we wouldn't have to waste any time uh, for our server trying to parse those. And let's just go ahead and run this. We have our index page, and we went ahead and registered a couple other paths. We have our about page, our contact page, Oh, and a little mistake there, I guess I forgot to change text on that one. But anyway, we're serving uh, four different files. We've registered all the paths. We have all the handlers that serve each one of these. And down here, we're actually using the, the method execute template. So we're passing in our writer, and we're giving it the name of our file. And we're not passing in any extra data to insert into these uh, into these templates. We'll get to that in our next video. But anyway, we have to tell it which which of these that it parsed that we want to go ahead and serve. Now, as you can see here, we're just returning you know our template uh, struct here, but we have to have names for all these different folders and it's just going to take whatever the name of that file is and that's what we're going to use to tell it which of these parsed objects we want to go ahead and serve. And as you can see here we used the template.parseglob function inside the folder but as you can see in this folder, there's several different ways of doing this. So you can actually, you know, you can actually create our template, our pointer to our template, and we could use the method parse glob on there, and it would work just the same. There we go. So most of the time, I would say you're probably just going to use parse glob. It's going to allow you to parse several things at once, and it's going to allow you to be specific on which things that you want to parse so that we don't waste any time parsing anything that doesn't need to be. So I hope that was helpful. Um, if you have any, any feedback on something you would like me to cover, uh, please put it down in the comments. Um, in the next video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at contr control structures and how we can input data into our templates and make them more specific. So I hope that was helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.